I met John one afternoon, and I remember it distinctly because he was saying, oh, this, this technology, I have it in my mind, it's going to, it's going to revolutionize the way we think of everything. <laughs> and it'll turn the whole media world upside down. We were looking at the potential for tidal power in, in the Bay of Fundy. The open ocean tidal ranges are typically between one or two meters. Um, in some parts of the Bay of Fundy, that range can be as high as, as much as 16 meters. Lung cancer has a survival rate of only one in five. And of, I think, 870 people that were diagnosed last year in Nova Scotia with lung cancer, 690 of those people died. I, I had an idea. I needed, I needed somebody outside of my discipline of English literature to help me realize that idea about bringing game spaces into the classroom and using them in pe as, as, as engaging the students pedagogically. Um, I didn't know the first thing of how to go about it. Uh, Acadia is, is completely supportive of, of bringing people together across disciplines, uh, across across the campus. You know, we get undergraduate students, which is very important. They have little or no research experience. They come to these projects with brand new eyes. They have not been indoctrinated with how research is done. So every time we get a student like that, we have to relook at how we do research. Uh, we try to save lives by warning people about possible excessive rate and exposure. It's a research, teaching, community, outreach all together, and students are involved at all levels. I think this university means an awful lot, not only to uh, the Valley, but also to Nova Scotia at large, and uh, um, I'm glad to see it's heading in the right direction. Um, I welcome, enjoy the program, I'm sure you'll like it. The most compelling piece about the student-faculty research experience at Acadia is the degree to which faculty at Acadia are willing to cede a certain amount of control over their research programs to their students. The special combination of commitments that exist at this university um, that are, in my view, becoming increasingly rare. And that is uh, a deep commitment to academic excellence uh, coupled with an equally uh, strong belief in a student engagement in learning. I've been interested my whole life in environmental issues and sustainable development and a large part of that was renewable energy. We were looking at the potential for tidal power in, in the Bay of Fundy. It's of interest to us because it has the, the world's highest tides. We're interested in knowing how much power can you take out without having really serious effects on the tides. And so these are three different types of turbines that we're looking at putting in the bay. They're in stream turbines so they sit in the currents. Um, in the streams and when they turn they generate power. If you take out small amounts such as 2.5 gigawatts you're still getting enough power, or a lot of power, you're getting enough to power about 800,000 homes but um, you would see, see less changes. The term that I thought was most relevant was interactive fiction and um, I think that's something that people can get a better grasp on in that it's not just a book you sit and read. It's more like those choose your own adventure books I used to read as a kid. That was the first project. The next one was Frankenstein. And the point of that was actually collaboration among students because there was a monster out there and you had to collaboratively try and subdue the monster. You can only do that if you work together because each character has a different piece of the puzzle and each one knows something that the other players don't. And so when you get to the monster, you can only survive if you actually work together. It was after these, these years, and I continued doing work for him even during the school year, that by the end, um, I didn't feel like I was finished at Acadia even though I was done my music education. I, f I still felt there was something left to do, and that was to finish computer science because all of a sudden, I had enough experience during my time here at Acadia without going on co-op to know how valuable these skills would be and what, I can, what, what can be done with them and how they can work with other disciplines in order to achieve different results. Radon gas is uh, colorless, odorless and radioactive. Uh, which makes it very difficult for uh, humans to detect without the help of 
some technologies. Homeowners, however, are still 100% responsible for testing their own homes and recognizing radon as a health threat. Uranium is a valuable material for nuclear power plants. So uh, though that might be good news for our economy, it's potentially very bad news for our health. Um, uranium is unstable and goes through a series of radioactive decay products, which are shown here. Um, and it eventually reaches radon, which is the one that's circled in red. It's very carcinogenic and uh, damaging to our DNA. And it leads to lung cancer. And radon gas is actually the second leading cause of lung cancer to smoking. The ultimate goal of this project is to make Wolfville the first ever radon safe town and uh, explain the methodology behind that so that other towns can use that and apply it to their towns afterwards. What we saw this evening is the Acadia difference. Our students are invited into the academy and given the opportunity to experience it in a way that they would not have in any other university in the country. It's why Acadia continues to be regarded as one of the leading undergraduate universities in the country. It is why our students do so wonderfully well after they graduate. It's why Henry and I are so proud of our alma mater and so pleased to be hosting this event this evening.